to make a these people come uh, uh, be brought to court. It is not it's fine, fine, isn't it? So, so you have, you think there were definite suspects who could be charged almost immediately? Exactly. We have got the, the names of the people who are in the room with Papi Karegea. We have, the, we have got the names of the people who are hired. So what, what, are you, what are you saying about the reason why this hasn't come to court in Johannesburg? Why? Well, you, you, uh, come again? Why is, has it not gone, gone to trial then, do you believe? That is a question we are asking ourselves also. So we can't answer that well, you, must, you, must have an idea. you must have an idea. Why, why not tell us? I'm trying to tell you, because uh, uh, we put that question to court yesterday. We said, why didn't they uh, bring uh, to court these people? Why didn't they trace them? Use the, if they are not just in South Africa, why didn't they use, use the methods of the international law? Why didn't they use the other agents, international agents, to get these people brought back? Yes, yeah, it's very country extradition. Ah. Well, it's coming on to work. Five years, uh, more than that now. What, what do you think the chances are that these suspects will ever see? the inside of a courtroom. Well, yeah, definitely we hope so, that the uh, uh, South Africa is the country which uh, uh, follow the, uh, the, the, the its constitution. Uh, it is is the, that it is the people of democracy or the human rights. That is the issue. Do you believe it could happen? And do you believe um, Paul Kigami could end up ever um, giving testimony? We know very well that the actual the constitution of Rwanda uh, <laughs> South Arabia. Uh, in that case of Kashyyyyk, the judge that the opposition does not allow the support. Well, there you go. So he, he, he won't be appearing there. Certainly not any positive. Thanks ever so much for us. We return to news day for the BBC World Service, but now let's have a little look ahead to some of this evening's highlights. At 17 GMT, it's focus on Africa. And then the inquiry examines whether there are grounds for impeachment of the US president. We unpack the complexity of the US impeachment process and meet special counsel Robert Mueller's probe and ask, what will it take to impeach President Trump? At 18.30 GMT, it's our weekly health check with Claudia Hammond. Is spending lost time on screens really damaging teenagers' mental health? We hear from a professor who found the effects of tech use on well-being very small, but it's barely worse than eating potatoes. And at 21 GMT, we're on assignment, France, Algeria, and the battle for truth. I'm in France with Josette Odom. For more than 60 years, she's been campaigning for the French state to take responsibility for her husband's death. From the BBC World Service. Hello, welcome to Newsday. Bola Mossa and Tom Hager with you. Coming up, Nigeria's main opposition candidate tells us about his concerns on the upcoming presidential election in Nigeria. Also, more allegations of the suppression of anti government protests in Zimbabwe. But people are having peaceful fighting. And we'll hear about a saliva concussion test for Premier League footballers. All that after the latest. BBC News with Nick Kelly. International experts say the world needs to change radically what it eats and how food is grown. Their report says that everyone needs a new diet, one that halves the global consumption of red meat and sugar, and doubles the amount of fruit and vegetables we eat. Otherwise, they say by 2050, it will be impossible to feed the world population in a healthy and sustainable world. The senior North Korean envoy has arrived in Beijing on his way to the United States. Kim Jong-chol is expected to meet the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, in Washington later this week to discuss the second summit between President Trump and the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un. The Mexican Congress has approved a bill to create a new national guard, composed of 60,000 members transferred from the military and the federal police. It would replace the armed forces in the fight against the drug cartels. It was one of the campaign promises of the new president, Andres Manuel López Obrador. The main opposition candidate in next month's presidential election in Nigeria, Atiko Abubakar, says he doubts the polls will be free or fair. The Abubakar appealed to the international community to help ensure the poll is credible. Yes. Media reports say federal prosecutors are investigating the Chinese tech firm Huawei 
allegedly stealing trade secrets from American business partners. There's been no comment from Huawei in response to the reports. Taiwan has urged its allies to condemn China for asking dozens of multinational firms not to refer to the island as a separate country. Taiwanese officials said Beijing.